Welcome to Saddleback Baseball on Sportsnet USA.net as the Bobcats today take on the Cypress Chargers in a cluttered OEC right now. You look at Golden West 10 and 5 overall, Santa Ana 9 and 6, Riverside 8 and 7, Saddleback 8 and 7, Fullerton 8 and 7. Their theme is 8 and 7 right now. And Orange Coast sitting at 7 and 8. Cypress hanging on to the edge of the glass, trying to crawl into the pool with everybody else at six and nine. Of course, Irvine Valley, they said, hey, it's been fun. But at 411, maybe the only team that doesn't make it because when you look at it, Cypress, even though they're six and nine, are 20, 13, and one overall. Big game today and Thursday, these two teams. Both those games will be on SportsnetUSA.net. Jack Burke will lead things off for your Cypress Chargers. Jack fouls it straight back. It'll be Burke, Robecki, and Shonsby starting things off, and De La Rosa in the hole if they get that far. Anderson Wolf on the mound, four and two overall with an ERA of 4.50. Burke pops it up. Taking control of it right there was Robert Gray coming down from first base for the first out of the game. We look at the defense for the Bobcats. Gray will be at first. Castilli at second. Nicoluk at short. Allen over at third, Bouchain in left, Tanaka in center, and Hoyer at right. Nice little shot and pickup taken there by Nicolette. Strong arm from shortstop for out number two. So quick play by Anderson Wolf on the mound so far. Bobcats, 20 and 13 overall, 8 and 7 in conference. Big lefty playing first base for the Chargers today. Bats left, but he's not a natural, natural left hander on the field defensively. Takes that right on the edge for a strike. Beautiful day for a baseball game, slight breeze. Strike two, same spot, same call. 337 down left, 328 down right. Anderson Wolf says, well, if that corner works, I'll keep working it. So we have baseball, baseball this week on sportsnetusa.net. And then next week we go back to softball. Nice little, hey, easy play for Gray at first. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We've played a half inning. It's Cypress zero. The Bobcats coming up to bat defensively. We look at Cyprus, Pavlovsky, one of the better pitchers for the Cyprus team, is on the mound today. Zach Anderson behind the plate. Ryan Shonsby over at first. Nathan Jackal at second. Darren Chapman at short. Albert De La Rosa over at third. Evan Robecki over in left. Robert Pitts Jr. Hey, if you're seeing the numbers, don't go by that. Just take our words for it. He is in center field. He's wearing number 23 today. And, of course, then the outstanding right fielder for Cyprus, Jack Burke, will be next. So that's the defense for the Cyprus Chargers. Castelli will start things off for the Bobcats. 
then the gentleman who every game he plays, he gets a hit, Mr. Tanaka. 33 game hitting streak playing center field. He'll be batting second. And then Allen will be batting third. JC will be the number three. Boucher, if they get that far, Boucher is in the hole, will be batting cleanup. You look at these teams, Saddleback ranked 10th in the rankings in Southern California. Cypress number 13. So when you look at OEC team, Santa Ana's number one. Golden West College is number three. That's before Golden West College jumped into first. Fullerton sitting at eight. Saddleback at 10. So yeah, can the OEC uh, place five teams in the playoffs? Easily. Castelli betting 341 this season. Smooth drink of water at the plate. Tall, lanky left hander. And what's real interesting with the gloves, Albert, and then you take the yellow tape, it looks like he's been doing mom's dishes just before he walked up to the plate today. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen that? I don't think I've ever seen yellow gloves on the yellow tape up like that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. something else. So, uh, but you know, like I, with with the maroon color and you know yellow also being saddleback colors, it 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 works. Pavlovsky, left hander slinging it. And one thing we'll see with Cyprus, which can always be a bugaboo, is the amount of walks that they give up as a staff in a game. They are a walk marathon sometimes pitching for the Chargers. Castelli looking for something to drive. He does down the right field line. It looks like it make it the wall. Burke goes down on one knee, picks it up easily. Castelli rolls in to second base for a stand up double. So Tanaka comes up. 33 games. He has played this season 33 consecutive hits, one per game. So he's got a 33-game hitting streak. Looks at a ball. And as much as, well, I'm a hard guy when it comes to errors, I'm not going to say a thing today. Everything's going to look like a base hit. So, <laughs> how generous of you! Christmas I, come early. I'm, for, I'm just going to give players. one now, just for the sake of it. Tanaka pals that off. One and one's the count. Castelli over at second on a sharp double into right field. Anderson took that foul ball off the knee. Umpires being nice enough to give him some time. Just started the game. Down and away. Two and one. Off the plate, snap throw, hits Pavlovsky in the foot and goes to right field. The runner advances. So that is going to be an error on the catcher that allows 
the runner to advance. It's the throw seemed a little bit rushed on the part of Johnson there. Or, sorry, Anderson. Johnson was a previous catcher for Cypress. Yeah, and Albert, it really was Pavlovsky trying to get out of the way. He actually steps into the throw. Yeah, uh, and also seemed like Anderson didn't really have time to get a good pop off at all. Like he threw from the knees and just didn't actually release early at all. Tanaka slaps it foul down the left field line. Yeah, and again, this is the thing that, you know, when you look at it, of course, infield playing deep at second and short. They're going to give up the run if it's hit to them. It's going to be a tough play over at first. Picked up throw. He's safe for a base hit. That makes 34 games in a row. So J.C. Allen playing third base comes up. So Tanaka extends his streak to 34 consecutive games. J.C. pops it up. Jackal out shallow right center makes the catch for out number one. Bouchane comes up now. Bouchane batting 297 coming into today's play. Throw over to first, almost thrown away. So the Bobcats on the board first. Pavlovsky goes back over, trying to get the runner leading just a little. Tanaka gets back. Now, Albert, I, I got to ask you, I know they get the red out on the outfield walls, but do you call the jerseys red on Saddleback? I'm going to put you in a spot being up here in their booth. Uh, according to, like the college guidelines and style, and style, it's a cardinal. It's a cardinal. Okay. Which is a shade of red. Yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a cardinal red. Okay. And then a gold. Tanaka goes back, leaning, trying to get people to dance. We talked about. Down the lines, 373 in the alley and left, 400 straight away. Shot down, deep behind the bag. Play there by De La Rosa, can't get it. So we're going to give that a hit. We're in consensus with everybody up here with us. Yeah, Bouchain had that beat, and then two Shansby made a drop at first. So like, it was, a, it was a good clean throw, made a nice pick, but just couldn't quite uh, pick it cleanly. So one run, three hits, and a big error by the catcher. So far in this bottom of the first. That brings up Barajas. Rodrigo Barajas catching today for the Bobcats. Runners on first and second. One out here in the bottom of the first. Barajas swings through that. Darren Chapman trying to keep Tanaka close at the bag at second. A little dancing going over there. Maybe a waltz, a two-step. Fouled away. P. 
beautiful picturesque sight here from the baseball stadium at Saddleback College. Look out towards the golf course in right field. Pavlovsky brings it. Just a little piece of it to stay alive is Barajas. That is the, if you're ever here and you look out there, that is the golf course the golf team plays on. I got told that during a soccer game here one night. Barajas. Around his eyes, swings through that one for the second out of the inning. So Bobby Gray playing first base for the Bobcats. Comes up, betting 250 this season. Gray fouls that one off. One run, three hits, one air so far in the bottom of the first. Previously went to Cal State Northridge. Fouls it straight back. CSUN. You know who else went to CSUN? Rashawn Haylock, former voice here on SportsnetUSA.net. Now the sideline person for the Clippers, still associated with the Sparks and the WNBA. And of course, we talked about Golden West College being in front. Used to be the voice for Golden West College football on SportsnetUSA.net. Talented young man, knows all the games. Gray, moving the bat a little. Everybody backs up quickly. Breaking ball, strike three called. But the Bobcats get a run. One run on three hits and two left on base. As we head to the top of the second, it's Saddleback 1, Cypress 0, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Of course, we look at what's going on. Saddleback College is going to be building a new softball field coming up. There'll be some renovating of the baseball field, we were told. So... Uh, a school that is always in transition. If you live down in this area and you're sort of looking for things to do because it's a beautiful area to be in, and your afternoons get a little or your mornings are a little slow. You get, yeah, you know, you don't have that chipper thing. Hey, come on over to this campus. Take a look at what goes on at Saddleback. Realize there are classes for anybody who wants to take them. No matter your age, no matter your background in education, you can find something here at Saddleback College. As we look at the top of the second, it'll be De La Rosa, Arenado, and Pitts to lead things off for Cypress College. Albert, I, I got to ask you, because you've been out, you've called a lot of Cypress games this year. They can put up the runs. There's no doubt about it, but they just... They can put up the runs at Cypress. We'll see if they can do that here at Saddleback, but... It's clear looking at their offensive stats that they can absolutely hit, but we'll see how Saddleback responds knowing just how well Cypress actually hits. So Anderson Wolf really going to be doing his best to offer up a challenge here for Cypress. De La Rosa comes up betting 400 this season, slugging percentage of 608, 38 RBIs. Oops. Yeah, 38 RBIs this season. That's the idea. He is the leader in RBIs. Surprisingly, I would have thought it was somebody else. But uh, good third base person. Drives it to straightaway center. Right there, Tanaka pulls it in for out number one. 
brings up Arenado, the DH for the day. Arenado batting 307. He's got a few hits, 27 for the season. So far, Anderson Wolf's just having a lovely afternoon, cruising along, playing catch, having a good time out there with his battery mate, Rodrigo Barajas, behind the plate. Son of former major leaguer Rod Barajas. He is. I, you know, we, that, is, we, that is confirmed. It's on his uh, Saddleback bio. Albert and I were talking about that because I mentioned Rod Barajas, and, and Albert said, yeah, he's not playing anymore. He's a coach. And then we wondered, so Albert looked it up. Just off the shoe tops for a ball. Gentle breeze here at Saddleback. Shouldn't do anything but the flight of the ball. Anderson Wolf tries to get there. You know, Albert, I always reference this player, and I reference a pro, but when you watch Barajas behind the plate, he sets so low with his lower body. He'll try to get the leg out to get that low position like right now. Taken for a strike. You literally watch him sit on the ground so you can see the acrobatic athleticism in Barajas behind the plate. You know, that just really shows like the versatility that exists behind the actual plate. It's more than just getting into a crouch. Like you're working to put yourself in the best like physical position to frame the pitch the way you need to frame the pitch when it actually comes in. Yeah, and, you, and you're trying to figure out that, you know, that umpire that might love those low ones and they'll just, you know, say that's the place to be. Pitts comes up batting 343. Speedy center fielder. Hits it to left field. Bouchain. Bouchain backs up a couple feet, makes the catch for out number two. So Jackal comes up. Now has become a regular figure at second base for the Cypress Chargers. So Anderson Wolf is just, you know, taking his time out there, hasn't given up a hit yet, Albert. He looks very comfortable on the mound. Absolutely, just a nice composed demeanor on the mound. Not really focusing too much on the runner at all. Does check him that time, but really his intention is on the hitter. Off the plate, down in the dirt. Barajas looks over at first. Castelli and Nikoluk deep at the respective positions at second and short. High, foul ball, heading for the street. One of the facility guys, good thing he didn't look out and wonder what that orb was coming his direction. Saddleback up by one. Tanaka keeps his hitting streak alive. Anderson Wolf in the dirt, trying to trying to get somebody to fish for one. Barajas makes a nice block on it, uses his body, gets in front of the catcher. Two down, one on. Top of the second. Oh, 
down low. So back to back. Well, I'm going to call him back to back, even though there was an out in between. Two walks given up now. Two on for the Chargers. That brings up Anderson, who's behind the plate today. It's a plethora of catchers for Cypress. Albert and I have seen all of them play defensively. And each of them definitely have their strengths and weaknesses. We've seen a lot of Nate Norman. I'd say he's arguably one of the better hitters behind the plate. But Johnson and Anderson typically, I, in my opinion, probably have like the better arms behind the plate. Yeah, we haven't seen Bagani play a lot. But we have seen him play. Down in the dirt. Rodrigo knocks that one down. Zach, a freshman out of Temecula Valley. Where he was a four-year varsity letterman and also a league MVP. Man, that's a long drive to go to Cyprus. A lot of right hand. Go down and pick it up. Nice snag over at third base by J.C. Allen for the final out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a couple left on base. As we head to the bottom of the second, it's the Bobcats one, the Chargers zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, we've seen a couple good third base people. We've got a good one for Cypress. And we just saw J.C. Allen out there, who's got a good glove, plays the game well. So, We were talking, and that person I'm talking about is Albert De La Rosa, who originally was a shortstop. And you and I would watch him, and he rear back and fling it and sometimes you had no idea where it was going it always seemed like he was a little bit rushed playing short but somehow you know playing third where it's you know the hot counter where you need to be a little bit rush it seemed like that slowed him down and kind of like met in the middle in terms of like his ability to play yeah and he really has become better defensively albert since they made the move absolutely his his throws are a little bit cleaner his range is right where it needs to be for that position so he found a home over at third base. And then they started playing around with Wyland and now Chapman has inherited that role at shortstop. Has done well over there. Playing short for him now. So Deutsch, Hoyer, and Nikoluk will be the three up. So Deutsch batting 263 as the DH. Sets himself deep into the batter's box. Deutsch previously played at Capistrano Valley High School before graduating in 2022 where he was a second team all South Coast League. So a couple hits for the Bobcats in the first inning, throwing air behind the plate Add them all together. The Bobcats are up by one. It's one to nothing here in the bottom of the second. Pavlovsky, the lefty who, I don't know, would you say he's the ace of the staff? By default. Okay. I'd have to say so. 
I mean, I know his last start really wasn't anything to write home about. He was solid until he walked like four people in a row and couldn't locate his fastball to save his life. But, you know, like he is clearly, you know, one of the better pitchers on the Cypress staff. Just has some things to work on. Yeah. Coach Hutting and the staff trying to do their best with that, along with Scott Pickler, who's still out there. Steve Lambright. Andrew Ramos, Nick Bruno, Carlos Gonzalez. And Grant Mayhew. It's the coaching staff for your Cypress Chargers. Pavlovsky starts things off with a big strikeout here in the bottom of the second. Hoyer playing right field today for the Bobcats. And more equipment repair. So slowing the game down. Of course, you look at some of the names on the wall here at Saddleback. Names you should know. Tim Wallach, Mark Grace. We were just talking about Mark Grace the other day. Rob Johnson. I think it was Corey Nalen that said Mark Grace, Hall of Famer. The Dodger person sitting next to me, sort of. He's thinking about it right now. He was a good player. I don't know about great, but he was good. Of course, if you look at the walls at a lot of these community colleges, that will tell you, you need to come out and watch community college baseball because the future stars are here right now. Pop back towards us. Fouled away. <coughs> Where you're in right field. Out of Paso Robles. Shot to second. Nice body protection. Gets a runner. Nice play by Nathan Jackal over at second. He gets his body in front of the ball, cradles it, and makes an easy throw for out number two. Yeah, just nice smooth ex execution. Exactly what you want to see out of a second baseman. Andrew Nikoluk comes up out of Simi Valley. Sophomore, 5'10", 175-pounder. Betting 351, strings past that one. Nikolak also previously attempted Loyola Marymount before coming to Saddleback College, where he played eight games. Pavlosky works the edge and says, yeah, that's the place to get a strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base as we head to the top of the third. It's the Bobcats one, the Chargers zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net, Ed. Albert, the old guy, happy to bring you this game today. Don't forget, we will do another Saddleback Cypress game. That will be Thursday of this week here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA.net. So two teams that are right there on the edge of will I, won't I? Well, the drama will continue Thursday here on Sportsnet USA.net. And really, Albert, when you look at it, they could get five teams 
out of the OEC. You've, you've been out there and seen a little Santa Ana baseball. You've been out there with Noah and, and seen that. Noah, Alba, Noah Alvarez caused that for us here on SportsNetUSA.net. And then next week, a little Cypress softball. Brad Pickler's team. Hmm. Hmm. That's the way to, to mention him right now. Get Brad's blood boiling when we look at it. Saddleback, 8 and 7, 20 and 13. Sitting there at 606 winning percentage. Chapman will lead things off, and then we go to the top of the order. Chapman offers a bunt, brings it back in time. You know, it's interesting, Mark. You know, Darren Chapman recently has started making the starts over at shortstop for the Cypress Chargers. And looking at his uh, bio here, said in uh, 2022 when he was in high school, made the most double plays in the state. Hmm. Wow. So if there's ever a guy you want in the middle infield, I think He's Darren Chapman's probably probably your guy. Yeah, Chapman rolls out easily to Robert Gray. Gray takes it to the base himself for the first out. So we go back to the top of the order. Jack Burke. Uh, you know, this is one of the guys I look at that I, I really feel has had an excellent season for Cypress this year. Love the way Jack plays right field. You can go and get the ball. Batting 347 for the season. And you've watched Jack all year long when we've been out there. He's absolutely an impressive athlete and a very impressive student as well. When he was in high school, he maintained a 4.0 GPA all throughout high school with a scholar athlete and a three-time champion in CIF. There you go. And he went to high school? At a Villa Park. Okay. So uh, three-time league champion, made, made the state semifinals. Doesn't look like they win, but uh, they played in the Boris Classic where he was the champion. Hmm. Brian Hoyer hauls that one in for out number two. So Evan Rolbecki comes up. Looked for Evan's dad. I didn't see him out here earlier. Robecki batting 401. So he was the OEC leader in hitting coming into today's game. Robecki lines up to center, stays up, hangs there just a little too long, and Tanaka hauls it in. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Zanderson Wolf is just saying, you know what? This is how baseball should be played. Three up, three down, and we keep on moving here on Sportsnet USA.net. Bobcats one, Charger zero here on Sportsnet USA.net. Pavlosky. Gave up a run in the first inning. If he run, because if the play at second base was thrown a little better, they wouldn't have got the runner, but the runner would not have moved over to third. So we'll leave it at that. Umpire's trying to keep things moving. Next year, I believe, in the CCCAA, they will have a pitch clock that must be displayed during baseball games. They do use a pitch clock now, but next year I was told by umpires that next year it has to be displayed so that everybody can see what the time is on the clock, especially the players on the field. 
I've got officials sitting up here with me, so I'm, I'm seeing if I'm getting the evil eye like, no, Mark, we're not. No, no, no. So we'll go back to the top of the order. Castelli will lead things off here in the third. Had a big double in that first inning. And, of course, took advantage of that throwing error. Up around the helmet. <clears throat> Swings through that one. Good leadoff hitter. Was batting 341 when the game started, so his numbers have creeped up a little. I'll give him I'll give him four more points. I'll I'll put him at 345. Hits him. No, they're saying it hit the bat. So it's a foul ball. Down the middle, just a little low. Infield deep, up the middle especially for Cypress. Again, almost hits the hands, catches the bat one more time. Strike three called. That was a little little to the outside, but big enough for the umpire to say, hey, I'm going to call it strike three. Five strikeouts now for Pavlovsky in this game. Tanaka comes up. He has played in 34 games now. He has got a hit in every one of the games he's played in. Consecutive. That's 34 games in a row. 34 hits in a row consecutively won a game. Uh, Albert, that's pretty impressive. It is. Like, regardless of, you know, this only being, you know, the junior college level, you don't even see that at the major level, let alone high school. It's, it is so impressive how this young man is at the plate. Batting 391 starting today's game. So he's going to be chasing everybody for that conference lead in batting average. And he's got speed, too. I mean, that's the thing that helps him to get those base hits. Skies it. Easy little catch. Right there for De La Rosa. Route number two. Well, if, uh, you know, Ed Ford, if you were mic'd up, I'd say, I got a second baseman standing on the grass. I got a first baseman that's almost standing on the grass. You know what? I'd drop a few bunts around here. I'd drive these hitters crazy. I'd say, guys, look how deep they're playing. Brings up Allen, who popped out his first time up. And that was over to Nathan Jackal. Pavlosky said, wait a minute, threw it down the middle between the chest and the knees. Breaking ball low. So Allen works his way on base with a walk. Brings up Bouchane. 
Looks over at the bench. So Bouchain had a hit. Looks at that one for a strike. Shane out of Mission Viejo, Capistrano Valley. Capo. Takes a breaking ball that doesn't break. Pavlovsky, snap throw to first. Stepped off with his back foot, gave a little flip over there. Doesn't get the runner. Tries again, almost throws it away. Tries a couple times to get the runner. Runner gets back. This time he decides to air mail it to the fence. And the runner moves on. Deception, deception is what you do. Runner at second, two outs, inside. Clean pick behind the plate by Anderson. Pavlovsky from the stretch. Breaking ball doesn't break. So Bouchain gets a walk. So they call him Junior. His name's Rodrigo. Struck out his first time up in the first. Pulls it. Foul. Oh, I tell you what. Just barely fell. Woo. Might have to take a, you know, one of those little slide rule machines and measure it and say if it actually was foul. I don't know. that. It was probably about six inches to the right of the bag. So Junior ripped it, just a little offline. Takes that one in the dirt. And of course, first base umpire pretty much straddling right on the line, so he was in an excellent position to make sure that that call was correct. Rodrigo out of Torrey Pines High School. Fouls that off. Down in San Diego. Hmm. I know somebody down there. Teaches high school there. Feisty old woman. Fouled away. Should have found out if Rodrigo, because a lot of the athletes took theater classes. I should have walked down there and said, you don't happen to know Marini Payne, do you? Junior might have come after me, though. I'm glad I didn't ask him. Holds his hands high. Down the dirt. Nice block behind the plate by Zach Anderson.
and Baraha, Baraha strikes out. No runs, no hits, no errors, but two left on base as we head to the top of the fourth. Well, it's a close one. It's the Bobcats one, the Chargers zero here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Don't forget this coming Thursday, a repeat of this game. No, not a repeat of the show, a repeat of this game as Saddleback will head to Cyprus. Albert, Ed, and myself will be there to greet them. Well, we hope, we're hope we're there to greet them, you know, here on SportsnetUSA.net and Chargers Live. And then next week here on SportsnetUSA.net, Chargers Live, a little Cypress softball. Interesting season. Fullerton College went and watched them play the other day against College of the Canyons. Watched Miss Fuentes in the circle. And she has picked up the speed on her fastball. I don't know what she's been throwing, but she's decided now I'm going to add two more miles an hour to my fastball, and she was smoking it yesterday against College of the Canyons. They won their first game 5-1, to one, didn't stick around for the second one. Everybody picked them to possibly win the state championship, but they said that last year about Palomar, and Cypress sort of ruined that choice. So we'll see what happens this year on Sportsnet, USA.net. One to nothing, Anderson Wolf pitching a solid game for the Bobcats. Shunsby fouls it off. Shunsby, De La Rosa, Arenado will be the three that will be coming up in this inning. On the outside part of the plate, Albert, that part of the plate just seems to be workable for the man dressed in black behind home plate. And now it's just a matter of the pitchers on the mound being able to adjust to the strike zone that has been determined. Yeah, absolutely. Gray at first. Castelli. Over at second, Nicoluk at short, Allen at third. That's the infield for the Bobcats. Down in the dirt. Bouchane in left, Tanaka in center, Hoyer in right. That sums up the defense, and that's the outfield for your Bobcats of Saddleback. Nice little pitch, swung and missed for a nice strikeout to start off here the fourth inning. First strikeout for the Cypress Chargers tonight. De La Rosa comes up. Tries to drop down a bunt. Well, I guess he was listening to sportsnetusa.net. Said, hey, somebody said drop a bunt. Tries to do that. Gets J.C. Allen on the move from third. Gets Robert Gray just to step in a few feet. Popped up. And it's out of play. In softball, Cyprus is up over Saddleback. That's in the fourth inning. It's Cyprus one, Saddleback zero. We'll be seeing them soon. I want to thank Albert and Ed for always keeping me informed of what's going on. Albert bringing you information about all these players today. 
here on SportsnetUSA.net. Line away. Speaking of all the information, De La Rosa was a four-year varsity freshman, batted 450. That's down in the dirt. On deck, Arenado. Nice crowd today here at Saddleback. Beautiful weather for a baseball game. Temperatures have gone up. Ripped into left field. Albert looks. Left fielder goes down. Albert turns on the speed. Heads to second with a stand-up double. I think that might have to be a single and advanced on an error, given the misplay of the left fielder there, Mark. Yeah, well, that's how the old guy is going to mark it. And that's for the simple reason. The reason Albert is saying that is because Bouchain goes down to block with his body. When he does, Albert, it's a hockey play. He kicks it to the wall, and the runner goes to second. So it's a hit and an error on that play. Runner in scoring position. Spin and throw. Okay, your eyes are better than mine. Do you see an error on the scoreboard? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so second error of the day for... Actually, they they put an, a second error for the Chargers, but it's really one error for the Chargers, one error now for Saddleback. Yeah, I saw the two up there, and I thought, okay. But then I couldn't see below it, and I thought... So... Correct in adding it, but they put it in the wrong location. No, no, they thought it was a total box. They were right. They were telling us there's two errors in this game. Fouled away. We know everybody we work. We know everybody we work with here at Saddleback. Never makes a mistake here at Saddleback. We know they're always right. That comes from the old guy here with a lot of love. Except for, to the, except for the Nina <laughs> <laughs> Arenado trying to tie this game. Needs to get a base hit. One on, one out. Takes it down. Nice play. Runner will advance, but a nice play by Gray over at first base. Gray is sure-handed first base person. Robert Pitts. So Robert Pitts will be up. Robert Pitts Jr., the center fielder for Cypress, swings through that over the top. So Robert Pitts, speedy, another one that that uh, could drop that bunt at any time and probably get a base hit. Pitts waits. Hits it front. Picked up off the mound quickly. It was Anderson Wolf for the out. No runs on one hit, one air and one left on base. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, well, it's the type of game you love to see, a close one. It's the Bobcats one, the Chargers zero, here on SportsnetUSA.net. I was talking about rankings earlier. Santa Ana, as of last night, was still at number one. They were 25-8-1 overall. Cerritos 29-5 overall. This is in the south. Golden West College, 23 and 11 overall. Long Beach City College, 24 and 10. LA Valley, 28 and 6. Palomar, 24 and 8. 
Cuesta, 26 and seven. Fullerton, 20 and 14. Then you had Glendale, 20 and 13. And then Saddleback, 20 and 13. So I took the top 10 from the south. That's what it was. Then when you look at Northern California, it's Fresno City on their rankings, 25 and eight are number one. Feather River, 28 and seven is two. Santa Rosa at three, 24 and 10. West Valley at four, 26 and nine. Modesto, 22 and 10. Lassen, 23 and nine, sitting at number six. Butte is there at seven, 25 and 10. Folsom, 22 and 12. San Joaquin Delta, 25 and 12. And Reedley, 21 and 12. That's the top 10 in the north, the top 10 in the south. So we have a pitching change. Tucker Fountain comes in now to pitch for the Chargers. So Fountain comes on the mound. Pavlovsky, Albert really short day for well, Pavlovsky, but pitched well. Pitched well, yeah, like a, a good clean four innings, only allowed the the one run, and you know clearly in in that you know uh, fourth inning. Actually, back in the third, he was kind of losing a little bit, but came back on track. Finished the game with that uh, six strikeouts, I believe. So yeah. still all around, you know, pretty good performance, but he's he's pitched better. Yeah, so he pitched three innings as we head here to the bottom of the fourth. I'm a little surprised they took him out. He had so many strikeouts. I thought his control was good today. Then again, it could be because he looks at the coach and says, I can't continue. Yeah, he, he had six strikeouts through, th uh, through three innings. But, of course, you know, he was starting to, I feel, lose his location a little bit after getting the first two quick outs in the third, issued back-to-back -back walks before eventually striking out Baraja swing, which I think was kind of a gimme because he had already gotten him in the first. So I already kind of had that exposure because, like, once you start getting to those, you know, back or half, I think Saddleback probably might have touched him up a little bit more or worse, probably started walking a little bit more. So... Better to have him have these these three cleanish innings, only allowing the one run, get a little bit more back on track compared to his previous start. So they change pitchers here at Saddleback. Gray will come up. He struck out his first time up. Gray, that 250 hitter. So we head for the bottom of four. One to nothing in favor of Saddleback. Gray fouls that one off over in the dugout. Shonsby over at first. Jackal at second. Chapman at short. De La Rosa in third base. Robecki in left. Pitts Jr. in center. And Jack Burke over in right. That's the defense for the Chargers. Behind the plate, Zach Anderson. So that sets up the Chargers defensively on the inside part of the plate. Well, you watch the way the umpire, he loves the left side of the plate. He's just lining right up off the catcher's left shoulder. And there it is. Strike three. So, Albert, you talked about it. That strike zone, you would mentioned it earlier, and it looks like that's where his strike zone is, right off the left part of the catcher's shoulder. Yeah, for righties, it's that inner part of the plate. That's just a little bit of a hang-up for both, for both lefties and righties. So we'll, and, and clearly, Fountain got the memo from Pavlovsky, hit that inner plate. I walked away six strikeouts. And now Cypress has seven overall with Fountain getting his first. Yeah, absolutely. So nice, nice job to start things off. Deutsch comes up. He struck out his first time up. And 
And there it is. Of course, we talk about the Albert Robles Vortex at Cypress. Now we've got the Albert Robles Strike Zone here at Saddleback College. Hit over to Short, picked up by Chapman, flipped the first in time. So Hoyer comes up. Bryson batting 350 this season. Lefty. Where's that front ankle support protective device? It's where you hit it off the inside of your ankle and you, you cry like a like a four-year-old. Well, in my case, I do that all the time, but you know. I don't have to be prompted. Swings through that. Fly ball. Pitts tries to break on it. It's going to drop in the vortex in the outfield for a base hit. So Hoyer finds that empty zone for a hit. Fourth hit of the game for the Bobcats. Brings up Andrew Nikoluk, batting 351 for the Bobcats today. Ball's in the dirt. Can't get controlled behind the plate by Anderson. The runner advances to second base. So that moves a runner in scoring position with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. Pitcher says, hey, let's have a little conversation. So you sort of wonder if... He, he crossed up his catcher on his signs, trying to make sure they're up both on the same page. Chapman playing on the edge of the infield. He's in the outfield. Nathan Jackal trying to keep the runner close. He goes to the edge. Line drive into the dugout, knocked down. That coach Hutting says, I got it. He on the manager. High pop fly in shallow left field in the sun, taken there by Chapman for out number three. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Well, we're moving along as we head to the top of the fifth. It's the Bobcats 1, the Chargers 0, here on Sportsnet, USA, dot net. Everybody's trying to get into the race. We've talked about 24 teams, Northern and Southern California. We saw Santa Ana. Last year, hold on to end up winning the state championship. Right now, Golden West College is head of the OEC. They're going to try and hold on. So we have Jacob Hudson now over at first base for the Bobcats. So Hudson's now in the game over at first. So Jacob Hudson. So a defensive change by Saddleback. Here to start off the top of the fifth. Boy, and I liked Robert Gray over at first base. I thought Robert Gray did really, really well. And of course, we talk about Brad Pickler and softball all the time. Cypress is playing Saddleback today. It's now Cypress 3 Saddleback zero here in the fifth inning. Cypress trying to hold on to number two in the OEC. 
here on SportsnetUSA.net. Anderson Wolf coming into the game today, four and two, ERA of 4.50. Fly ball, deep back to left to the 373 mark. Stick out my hand, catch the ball, and that's what Jacob Bouchain does for out number one. Just an amazing catch by Bouchain out in left field. Tracked it down, saw it all the way, got to the warning track, knew exactly where it was, and made a nice little leaping catch into the outfield fence, nice and clean all the way. So long fly, got the crowd excited, but at the end of the day, it was nothing more than a fly ball out. Anderson comes up, swings through that one, grounded out to third his first time up. J.C. Allen had him in that second inning. J.C. over at third for the Bobcats today. Made the play. Fouled straight back. Big ballpark. Albert, I mean, really, when you look at the numbers, feels like feels like it's a little larger than what the numbers tell me. Anderson Wolf taking his time from the stretch. Pops it up. Who's going to take it? The new first baseman, Jacob Hudson, said it's all mine and pulls it in for out number two. So Chapman comes up. Grounded out to Robert Gray his first time up. Back, foul ball. Chapman coming in to Cypress, specifically for their baseball program. Wants to play baseball as long as he can, but uh, is a business major and looking to advance once he's finished here. Take that game of baseball Roll it over as an agent. Use your business experience to represent those multi-millionaire athletes. Take your 3.7% on all their dealings. Pitch down and away. And you can be as high, happy as any community college educator then. Shot. No play made. Hit number two for the Chargers today. So Jack Burke has a runner over at first with two outs. Jack Burke hitting 347. 32 RBIs, 11 home runs, nine doubles, two triples. He's been up 124 times, has 43 hits this season. A little low. So Cypress, who's prolific offensively, can get the ball in play, only has two hits this day so far. Yeah, Anderson Wolf just 
bringing that ferocity on the mound. Cyprus unable to accommodate for it yet. Straight back off the top pole. Got to like this stadium here at Saddleback. Big enough for a nice crowd. Not overly big where you would feel like you're in an empty park. Fouled away. Not a bad drive down here on the five. See if the runner goes. They've been quiet on the base path. Of course, they haven't had a lot of people out there today. Go back over to first. Snap tag. Hudson doesn't get it down quick enough in time. Runner's safe. Chapman leaning. Wolf slowing things down. In the dirt, Chapman was going. They're not going to get him. He steals second base. So Chapman was leaning Albert, and then the ball goes down the dirt. No, no real chance to get him. Excellent awareness. Jack. Now has an opportunity to drive in the tying run here in the top of the fifth. Two down. Chapman can fly. Burke takes ball four. And, of course, a young man that we've gotten to know because of his family and his dad and talking to him and a wonderful young man. Evan's got a great attitude in the game. Betting 401. 32 ribbies this season. Four home runs. 13 doubles and one triple. Dylan Blakely is warming up. Left-handed pitcher out of Woodbridge in Irvine. So was in the bullpen warming up for the Bobcats. Have a conversation over there. Anderson Wolf has pitched well. Up one to nothing. And I know... If you're the coaching staff of Saddleback, you want to really keep that wonderful attitude going on. This is where you don't want a kid that pitches well through five and was close to at least having an opportunity to win the game. Drive into the alley. It goes down all the way to the wall. One run in. Two runs in. And Cyprus takes the lead on a stand-up double by Becky. No credit to Shane for the effort, but just didn't quite have the speed or the range to chase that one down. He certainly made the most of it, made a dive for it, but that ball let it just beyond his glove. And of course, once that landed and made all its way to the fence, Rolbecki was going to all the way. Two runs in. And Robecki just keeps rolling along. I tell you what, kid just, his dad is, is such a delightful man out of the game. You can do nothing but cheer for a young man like Evan, who just got that big double for Cypress. And you certainly know uh, 
he's happy sitting there along behind the fence. He's always, he's pretty much always at the games. He's yeah. at every game, yeah. yeah. I, I know you said you didn't see him earlier, but no, he's actually down there. I, I, I saw him because he's always going up to the net, filming his son whenever he hits. Very, very intent on doing that. Yeah. Albert and I have had the pleasure of meeting him more than once. Nice man. So Cyprus with three hits in this game, up two to one. Pop fly right over the top of us. Fans sort of look in the parking lot and go, uh, nah, okay, I'm okay. Not my car. Light breeze blowing to dead center. Just a little flare shot to left field this time. Handled easily out there by Bouchain, but not before Cypress gets a couple runs on the board. Two runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to bottom of five, well now it's Cypress two. Saddleback one here on Sportsnet USA.net. Cypress baseball up in their game. Cypress softball up in their game against Saddleback. So both of those games with a bat and a ball right now are slightly on the scale in favor of the Chargers. But we got a long way to go. And with this Saddleback team, and the way they play and where they're at right now in the OEC standing, you need to look at them coming out and being able to make that move. Tucker Fountain still on the mound for the Chargers, came in last inning. And for those of you that have been fans of Cyprus, I mean, you can say they can hit the ball, but it's been the possible mound. So maybe Coach Hutting has finally decided, hey, you give me three, three good innings, and I'm going to the pen. You give me two good innings, and I'm going to the pen. You give me a couple good innings, and we can win the game. Maybe that's what Cyprus is going to look for against this Saddleback team. Back to the top of the order here in the fifth. Castelli comes up. Had a double in the first, struck out in the third. Over the middle, can speed be there? Picked up, flip over in first. Nice play right there, thrown out as Chapman gets it on an easy little bounce and makes the throw. Brings up Tanaka, who just said at the beginning of the game, hey, let's get the drama done. Let me get my base hit. That'll make 34 in a row. Then popped out to De La Rosa, his last time up. One for two today. Tanaka, also one of the many business majors here at Saddleback. I've noticed it tends to be a popular major along athletes' business. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great major for an athlete, being a business major. You're going to get in so many financial situations. If you're good at what you do, you may use the game of baseball to, like I said, be a representative, work for a team. Tanaka takes that for a strike. I think it works hand in hand. So Tanaka works his way on with a walk. Allen. 
Coming to put you on 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 the uh, line here, Albert. We know he can run. You gonna send him over at first? Mm. What's Allen hitting right now? Allen into this game was at, hitting 350 when the game started. That's tough. That's a tough call. You're you're down by one, so. You're definitely in a position where you can get aggressive without being too risky. It's certainly worth it to try and test the delivery of Fountain at his timing, kind of throw him off. He's already had, you know, one inning in. I think now would be the good time to try and disrupt his momentum. And we've seen Zach Anderson and his throw to second base. So I think I send the runner. If I'm the Bobcats, I'm going to put him on the move. Diving play made in left field by Evan Rolbecki, who comes up as Tanaka was moving. Well, I guess somebody down the dugout listens to sports at USA.net and says, yeah, that old guy knows what he's doing. Rolbecki just decided to trump me on that play and catch it in left field. Yeah, Allen definitely made great contact. Went hit with that one right at the screws but right into the glove of Rolbecki. So they're going to throw the ball out, bring in a ball for new play. So I like the fact that they had the runner moving. It took an outstanding play in left field not to have people standing at the corners at the end of that hit. Who Shane batting just a little under 300. Good block by Anderson. So again, we'll see if we get a little motion going out here. Go back over to first. Two to one. Cypress finally finds a couple hits and scores a couple runs. Runner was going in at second base. Saddleback had the right idea by calling a pitch out, but the throw by Anderson was just high and far. So I think Tanaka was going to pretty much be in there nonetheless. You and I might have been able to steal that base. Okay, you could have stolen that base. I probably could have stolen that base. Yeah, you could have. With, with the high throw, I could have. With, with a little more on-target throw, I'd probably be out by like a foot or two. I, I would have just stopped and said, you got me. Corey Nalen would have taken two steps and said, mm, nah, time for lunch. So the tying run is over at second base. Jacob Bouchane. Just a single can get this kid home. Drives it down the right field line. Is it going to stay fair? It is. Into the corner. We're tied at two. Bouchane wheeling. He's not stopping. Now he's coming back. Throw behind him. He gets back in time. Boy, he was looking at three all the way and then said, whoops, traffic jam on the five. I better go back to where I was coming from. We're tied at two. Just an excellently timed and a well-placed hit by Bouchain to tie things up. Fouled away. So Barajas comes up, Junior. Struck out twice today. So Rodrigo. 
Watches that one high and away. Rodrigo puts a spark into that one. Back off the wall, Rodrigo all the way to second. On a huge double, just to the right of the 400 foot mark. And Saddleback is up by one. Three to two, here in the bottom of the fifth. So the offense finally has raised its head. As Gray comes up. You know, Mark, it's a good thing that Barajas is a kinesiology major because he's going to need some work on his legs after legging that one out. Yeah, he. I tell you what. You know, and he put some pop into that baseball. Just barely missed clearing it. That one to right field. Jack comes up and makes the catch. Two runs on two hits, no errors, and one left on base. As we head to the top of the six, it's the Bobcats three, the Chargers two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. So new pitcher in the game now for the Bobcats. It is number 15. And that was Dylan Blakely who they had warming up in the bullpen. So they're going to bring in Blakely out of Woodbridge. Sophomore. 215. Six foot one. So Anderson Wolf goes five innings, allows two runs, one strikeout the entire time. A lot of ground outs and a lot of pop flies. So an effective pitcher in that regard. And with Saddleback taking the lead on the bottom of the fifth, he leaves this game in line to win. So here, I'm, I'm gonna really confuse everybody in the audience because he threw a lubricant type of game not many strikeouts not a lot of hits and he walks away with a lead so very much like Lou Burdett did when he pitched for the Milwaukee Braves back in the old days if you're not sure who he was look him up Uh, thank you, Ed. <laughs> At least I'm not the only one. Uh, hey, I'm not that old. You know, spawn and sane and pray for rain was the uh, mantra. See? Johnny Sane and Warren Spawn. And then Lou Burdett. Pitched for him. Dale Crandall, a local Fullerton guy, played for the Milwaukee Braves, went to Fullerton High School. Straight up the middle, De La Rosa. Says, Mark, I'm getting tired of listening to you talk. It looks like that actually got a piece of Blakely there on the mound, ricocheted right off his back. So Arenado comes up. Bobcats take the lead in the bottom of the fifth. Cypress trying. So first five innings were quiet. It was nap time. Now it's late afternoon. Everybody's had their milk. They're awake. They're youthful. And the runs are starting to come in.
fouled away. Parking lot. Pits on deck. Robert Pitts Jr. in uniform number 23. People may say, why? Well, it's one of those things that happens every once in a while. Somebody looks around and says, wait a minute. I don't have a jersey. That's what happened to Robert. So he's in number 23 today. Arenado waits. Check the runner. Down to third. Trying to turn two. Get the lead runner back over to first. Double play. Five to four to three. Sweet looking from corner to corner. Double play. Starts over there with Allen. Flips it over. Gets it over to a second base burn. Castelli who knows how to make that play. And then they turn it over to first. And Robert Gray who should have been there, but is replaced by Hudson. So Hudson makes the dig to complete that double play. Five to four, two, three is how you scored at home. Pitts trying to get things going, dropping a bunt, attempting to drop a bunt. Off the plate. And when I look at uh, Rodrigo Barajas behind the plate, of course, I watch the way he flattens out like a ballet star. He's got that balance. And then again, I go back in years. Tony Pena, Pittsburgh Pirates, was that athletic the same way he is. Sets a beautiful frame for his pitcher. So good defense by the Bobcats. Strike three. No runs on one hit. No errors and nobody left on base. As we head to the bottom of the sixth, well, it's your Bobcats up by one. Saddleback three. Cypress two here on Sportsnet. USA.net. Ed Albert, the old guy, happy to bring you baseball today. Here on SportsNetUSA.net. Don't forget these two teams will meet again on SportsNetUSA.net this coming Thursday over at Cypress College. So if you didn't get enough today, well, all you have to do is tune in on Thursday or come out to the ballpark and get a little more exciting community college baseball here on SportsNetUSA.net. Don't forget these are the stars of the future. You'll see somebody that you'll go, why do I know that name? Why do I know that name? And myself, Corey Nalen, Ed Ford have done that numerous times in the game of softball, watching it from the PGF, the high school levels, the community college levels, and then we get to see these wonderful student athletes play at the World Series of Softball. Same thing here with the game of baseball on sportsnetusa.net. So make sure you come out and watch these student athletes. That's right, they're student athletes. Go to class every day, help mom and dad looking for a dream besides baseball. The community colleges help get them on their way and they're set to go. Okay. So we have a pinch hitter. Jason right up. That's why I always love coming to Saddleback. Somebody's always keeping an eye on me, making sure I stick with the game.
right, the left-hander up there. on the inside part of the plate. And like I said, picturesque from here. Of course, if you're a golfer, this is a great place to sit because I just sort of look at the holes and pretend I'm out there playing golf today. Hit to Nathan Jackal, and that's a big air on Cyprus. A rare bobble out at second for, for Cyprus. So Wright, who comes in to pinch hit, gets on with an error. Square, try to drop a bunt. So Hoyer. Out of Paso Robles. Plans to major in communications. Wow. Hopefully. That's a heck of a drive to school every day, isn't it? Hoyer takes that for a strike. Hopefully baseball works out for Hoyer because I have to have to fall back on communications on that phony degree. Oh, that's from somebody who's got one next to me. <laughs> He understands that one. Off the plate. I've learned nothing. Nothing. Well, it's like when the old days guys went to UNLV and got a degree in restaurants. Larry Johnson got, I think that's what Larry got his degree in. That's why your strikes out. Nicola comes up. Eight strikeouts for the pitching staff for Cypress today. Nick look offers a little high taken back in time. Three fifty one hitter. Uses the entire field. Runner goes. Nick look gets underneath it. Robert Pitts Jr. comes up. Quickly gets it back to the infield. Out number two. Castelli comes up. Started this game off with a double. Struck out in the third, then grounded back to Darren Chapman at short in the fifth. Runner goes. Throw to second. The ball was waiting for him. and gets him there. No runs, no hits, one big air, and nobody left on base. As we head to the top of the seventh, well, it's a good one. It's the Bobcats three, Cypress two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Last time we looked, Cypress softball was beating Saddleback. Three to nothing here on SportsnetUSA.net. Speaking of Cypress softball, next Tuesday, Riverside City College and Cyprus. That game on Charger Live and SportsnetUSA.net. And of course, because we love all the games we call, and it's summertime, a little more baseball on Thursday as it'll be Saddleback against Cypress on SportsNetUSA.net. So Cypress 
ends up, I'm going to say it's a run rule because it's eight to nothing. So they run rule. Saddleback, eight to nothing. Brad Pickler's team wins, and Brad Pickler's team needs to win everything. I haven't looked at the standings. Are they, hey Ed, are they in second or third? They're in second still, okay, of the OEC. It's that close. So that's what we're looking at right now. Jackal comes up here in the seventh. Walked in the second. Flight out to left field in the fifth. The Bobcats up. Three to two. Would be a huge win for Saddleback. Because everybody is bunched together right now. And so that's where they'd like to make that move. As there is a group of them sitting at eight and seven. Swung and miss. Riverside, eight and seven. Saddleback was eight and seven. Fullerton was eight and seven. Orange Coast was seven and eight. Those were the teams bunched up coming into today. Need to make a little separation if you're the Bobcats. Ball's on the outside. They can win two this week against Cypress. They can make that slight little, hey, let's put it in drive and pull away a little. Popped out of play. Nobody moves. Nobody sees the ball, and you know what? The little dog down there almost said, oh, no. The dog had eyes on it the entire way. The owner did not. You know, it was like it hit, and both the people down at the edge went, where'd that come from? <laughs> Offer, strike three called. Inside pitch at the knuckles. Only the third strikeout of the day for Cypress hitters today. So Rhoda comes up for Cypress. Yeah, it's been one of those days that they, they you know, They've gotten wood on the ball, or, well, whatever the plats are made out of now. I'm, I'm old school, baby. It should be wood. Carbon fiber. Rhoda trying to do Dylan Blakely saying, hey, oh, bring us home so we can win this one on the mound for your Bobcats. Down in the dirt. Takes for a strike. <laughs> Rhoda batting 241. Swings through that. Back to back strikeouts. Heard another scoring update here in the booth. Mark Pelamar leads Southwestern by three touchdowns. 21 to nothing. Can you imagine? I mean, that's just, you know, somebody asked me about run rules in baseball. I said, 15, it's over. Run rule.
you know, they do it in the game of softball. They should at least think about it in the game of baseball. Nice bunt drop down, quick and turn. Better play from the mound, and Chapman gets thrown out. Three up and three down, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base as we head to bottom of seven. It's the Bobcats three, the Chargers two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yes, we have discussed that many times. On SportsnetUSA.net, if people think we're kidding up here, no, we do think there should be a run rule for baseball. And for anybody who argues and said, well, we could come back, we can make the things. Guys, go back to the years of University of Hawaii when they led the nation in home runs and softball. Nobody was close. Hawaii could be down by 14. And next thing you know, it would be 14-14 because everybody that came up seemed like they were hitting a home run. They were the argument against the run rules that, yes, in softball, you can come back. Uh, cooler, heads, cooler heads prevailed on that one, and the run rules still exist. Uh, it saves athletes, and, uh, you know, it saves that, except for mom and dad, that fan base that says, well, this has been fun. Let's go home, you know. So Castelli will lead things off here in the seventh. Big double. Struck out in the third, then grounded out to Chapman in the fifth. It's Chapman, goes up, sucks it in, throw over to first. Can't make the throw. Runners collide, but everybody seems to be okay. Runner will. Now the ball looked like it went out of play, so if it did, the runner automatically gets second. So the ball did go out of play, so the runner gets to move. So we're going to get an E6. So another error for Cyprus in this game. And that really was a routine grounder there for Chapman. And he just seemed to botch the throw, pull Shonsby off the base. And of course, he got that little small collision at first. Luckily, all the players are fine. You know, it looked like the ball sort of came into his stomach. And I think that's one of the things that threw him off. He didn't field it cleanly. Tanaka comes up. Got a single in the first. Popped the third in the third. Walked in the fifth. One for two today. Drops a bunt down. Tanaka makes the sacrifice work. Nice bunt. Absolutely beautiful. It just dropped dead right there. Maybe a foot, foot and a half in front of the plate made the definitive play first. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really nice statement, Albert, because he got the ball down, which he needs to do. And then if you luck out and beat the throw, great, it's a hit. If you don't, it's not. We're going to get time out on the field because the Bobcats have that all-important second run sitting down at third base here in the bottom of the seventh on sportsnetusa.net. They're going to change pitchers here, so we'll see who they're going to bring in. It's going to be number 25, Tommy McGuire, coming in now for your Chargers. And we've seen him pitch for Cypress this season. So McGuire comes in. Pitch for 
McGuire's got an ERA of 3.90. 27 innings he's pitched. He's won four, Albert, and he's got two saves. It's not too bad when you look at him being there. So McGuire comes in, see if he can hold him. For every nine innings Tommy pitches, he's got 9.76 strikeouts. So McGuire throws it hard. He's got a nice little breaking ball that he can add in there. Will occasionally show a changeup. So when you listen to those scores, Santa Ana goes backward. It, it all ended now. Fullerton steps forward. Saddleback steps forward. Golden West steps backwards in that. Saddleback is right there for the lead. They would move up on top of Santa Ana or be even with Santa. It should be on top of Santa Ana. Golden West, who did have the lead, they go backwards. So it's actually a two-game switch when you really think about it. Fullerton will hang out with Saddleback at the top in their game. So Saddleback holds on today. You know, hold on to your hats and glasses because it can be anybody's OEC championship. Big swing by Allen. JC's got a smooth style and a smooth swing as a hitter. That time he dropped just down a little. Down in the dirt, blocked right there. Castelli over at third. Be the important two run lead. Heading into the eighth. On the edge. Nice frame behind the plate. Anderson gives the wiggle waggle. The umpire gives him the strike. Breaking ball just fouled off. Cypress six and nine, 20 and 13 overall. Saddleback eight and seven, 20 and 13 overall. Down in the dirt for a ball. So overall records, these teams are tied coming into. Conference records, eight and seven, six and nine. Two game swing against these two teams. Cypress loses, they're down by three. Down in the dirt for a ball. So these two games are huge between Cypress and Saddleback this week. Today and Tuesday, Albert. Today and Thursday. Two great days of baseball. Pull down the line. Foul. 
Evan Rolbecki goes down, throws it back in. Rolbecki, Pitts, Burke in the outfield. Be interesting if it's a medium fly ball to see what Saddleback does. Infield in. Fouled away. De La Rosa in, even with the bag at third. You bring Chapman in a few steps at short. Jackal comes in at second. Sconsby a little behind the bag at first. Beautiful pitch on the outside part of the plate that breaks away for a strikeout. Nine strikeouts for the pitchers from Cyprus today. Ushane had that big RBI double with two outs back in the fifth. And you know he'd love to do more of the same just now. Yeah, exactly. McGuire'd like to stop him. Six foot five. Big kid. 210. McGuire throws a breaking pitch that breaks off the end of the plate. Tommy's trying to get out of this, trying to keep him within one. Lushane would like to get anything. Jacob. Looks at that for a ball. Jacob, six feet, 175 pound freshman. Plays the game well. Good left fielder, solid hitter. Fouls it off. Battling out there. Nice battle between both of these young men, Albert. Absolutely. First, Allen, of course, he ended up getting the strikeout. And now Bouchane battling, too. Off the end of the bat. Evan Robecki comes in and says, no problem. I got it, which he does for out. Number three, no runs, no hits, one error. And as we head to top of eight, it's Saddleback three, Cypress two, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. We go to the top of the order in the eighth inning. Burke, Robecki, Sconsby, and then De La Rosa on deck after them. So. The guys who can hit are coming up. So we've seen this before. Now, I, I really do have to ask you. I, we always tease when we're at Cyprus. We call it the Albert Robles Vortex. But does this ballpark play bigger than some of the other community college ballparks? It definitely feels like it does. Because, you know, like Cyprus has been making contact pretty much all game. They've have three strikeouts all of which came in like the last two innings so like they've made contact plenty of flyouts a few ground outs here and there courtesy of Ederson Wolf but that's it like I it's clear that Cyprus is making contact they just need some of those balls to drop right in the right location get some better timing in they don't have the wind of Cyprus baseball yeah playing to their advantage like they do here so at some point, the hitting of Cyprus, something might give in, and they might catch one of these Saddleback pitchers off guard. That's all it takes, just a few well-timed hits. That can change the whole tide of this game, especially with uh, the Bobcats only leading 3-2. to two. 
Well, we'll see what happens as we go back to the top of the order here in the eighth. Jack Burke will start it off. Down by one. Looking for something. Evan roll Becky on deck. Jack pops it up. It finds its way out of the ballpark. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Hello, I was down at Saddleback. Uh, my car got, oh, okay. Not covered. Jack looks at that, does not get called. Jack thought he had missed one. I mean, the reaction of Jack Burke just then was like, oh, darn. No call. One and one's the count. Jack pulls it into the dugout. Almost took the heads off of one of the few Bobcats players there down the third baseline. Dylan Blakely still on the mound for your Bobcats. Blakely has a little high. Two and two's the count. off the plate. Barajas tries to sneak it in the strike zone, doesn't get the call. Three and two. Tried. Framing behind the plate is an art form. So Jack works a walk. Nobody, well, I see bodies moving. Yeah, bodies are moving down in the bullpen. I can't see any numbers, though, but bodies are moving. Four saddle back in the bullpen. Evan Robecki comes up. Looks like Isaac Rodriguez, number 21 for Saddleback, has started moving on in the bullpen. Robecki takes a strike. Big two RBI double in the fifth which gave Cypress a lead last time Evan was up. They go over to first. And of course those two RBIs, the only runs given up by starter Anderson Wolf. So Robecki. They go back over to first. Burke looks over at the dugout. Jack can run. So we look at Jack's got six stolen bases caught three times so far. Robecki was batting 401 coming into today's game. He's 1 4 3 in today's game. Led the conference. Evan looks. Wait. Evan drives at the left field. Easily underneath it. Just got up in the air a little too much. And Jacob Bouchain gets underneath it for the out at the 373 mark. So Robecki hits it well but it just doesn't carry as far as you think it would or it would if it was at Cyprus. Would have carried a lot better at Cyprus. At Cyprus, I feel like it would have been out or at least actually making it to the wall. 
Gonsby comes up. Grounded back to first. Then had a couple of strikeouts. Big lefty Ryan wants to turn on the ball. He's got a lot of room down that right field line. Burke looks back over at the dugout. See if they've got him moving. Nine attempts. Six stolen bases. Caught three times. They wait, a little waggle. There he goes. Seven stolen bases. So Junior catches the ball, but the ball comes up, can't control it, can't make a play. Yeah, bobbled it in transition. And it was already gonna be a tough play as it is, considering that one was low in the dirt, barely able to stick with the recovery. So easy stolen base for Burke. Jack over at second now with one out. Down in the dirt, Jack takes off. Ball gets away from the umpire. Thrown out into right field and the game is tied. Here's the thing that Jack Burke did which is often taught by coaches. If the ball gets away from a catcher to the right or the left, not out in front of them, take off running because they must pick it up and make the throw. Burke did, and an errant throw now ties the game. He's ruled that a stolen base in an E2. Yep. So Albert and I add an error on that play. And now a full count to Shonsby. This is the way this Cypress team plays. Shonsby puts it into it. Down to right field. Oh, home run. Right off the yellow marker. And now Cypress is up four to three. You know, like I said, Mark, all it takes is a few well-placed hits. Yep. In this case, just the one big hit for Shonsby to take the lead as Burke had worked the walk and eventually, you know, stole his way around the bases and took advantage of an errant throw from behind the plate. But Cypress takes the lead. And it's like, Albert, you called that shot because you said they've hit the ball hard. At Cypress, it should be gone. Well, that's 328 down the right field line. He probably hit it about 330. And I'd call that a short porch for them. So he put it in the place that you would say, hey, if you hit it there, it's gonna be a home run. So the Robles Express continues for Cyprus. And at least right now, if you're a fan of the Bobcats, Kind of rests easy knowing at least the bases are empty. Throw over to first to get him for out number two. So two runs on one hit, one big error this inning. And strikeout number five for Cyprus. Off the plate for a ball.
High and away. Arenado walked in the second, grounded back to first in the fourth, and then hit into a very lovely five to four to three double play. Defense for Saddleback just looked picturesque on that one. Down on the feet. And Albert, the wind, I don't know if it was there when the ball was hit, but just slowly blowing towards the right field. Nice and steady, too. On the inside corner for a strike. So the crowd at Saddleback feeling good. Thought they had this one where they needed it. Said, hey, we're up by one. We should be up by two, but we're up by one, and all the leaders are losing. Now it's flipped. Fullerton won today. Santa Ana lost. I think Golden West College lost. Pick up over at third. Nice play there by J.C. Allen to finally end the inning. But not before Cypress gets a couple runs. Two runs on one hit. One unfortunate error as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Well, it's now Cypress four. Saddleback three here on Sportsnet. USA.net. Ed. Albert and the old guy, happy to bring you these games here on SportsNetUSA.net. Exciting community college baseball. That's one thing about community college baseball. You never know what you're going to get. You know, it's sort of like a grab bag. You know, when you were a kid and they'd say, okay, hey, we're giving away prizes. Stick your hand in the bag and whatever you get, you're stuck with it. Uh, Albert, you've been no around enough baseball this year. All the games that we've done, how many times have we thought a game was over and then we realized, hmm, we might be here for a while? A hundred percent of the time. Okay. It's, it's, it's been that thing that uh, we have seen it here in community college baseball. Exciting sport. Community college baseball here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yeah, tough, tough game. And, of course, that's just the way, you know, the games happen to go down when playing at Cypress because the wind is – always and forever a factor on that field oh yeah but also you know like the like the state of this level of college baseball is always in flux given the level of hitting the level of pitching you never know what you're going to get yeah yeah so we head to the bottom of the eighth saddleback's got two opportunities tommy two. mcguire still on the mound for cypress Rajas will start it off. Infield deep for your Chargers. I mean, if you've ever played slow pitch softball, I mean, they're all they're all out there like where you put in that tenth player, who's that short fielder in the outfield. Barajas swings through that one. Man, I'm standing three feet on the grass. That's what Nathan Jackal's doing over at second base. Sconsby says, well, I might as well get off a of first, which he does. Shot. As deep as you play, Barajas found the hole. Nice base hit. Junior didn't try to do too much with it. Also forgot to mention Johnson now behind the plate after Rota pinch hit for Anderson. Ooh.
So Hudson up at the play. Jacob squares the bunt. Drops a bunt down. Goes down to the first baseline. Nice bunt, almost a hit, but a perfect sacrifice to move the runner in scoring position. So Wright comes up. Jason Wright had a West View down in San Diego. All the way to the backstop. So the runner moves over to third. And of course, I'm gonna call that a pass ball. Yeah, it was down the dirt, but if you're the catcher, you can knock it down, get on the knees, let it bounce off your body, go straight ahead. It went through the wickets. So we scored that as a pass ball. Tying run over at third base. You call that a pass, but I call that a ball pitch. That's and that's just, what we like about that's just Sportsnet. A little fun fact about uh, Jason Wright, though. He's ambidextrous. Both oh, really? He's both a righty and a lefty. Swing through that one. I'm sort of like that. I'm apoplectic. <laughs> Put the ball in play. Down in the dirt. Infield in. Squeezing at the corner. Tied up the middle. Runner breaks for home. That's where the ball is going. And right really in a nice ideal hitter's count with one out and a runner on third. So we'll see if they make that move. So he walks, runners at the corner. Boyer comes up, struck out his last time up. And I know what you want right now, Mark. Oh, yeah. You know, with, I mean, uh, look with, how. With runners at the corner and a lefty up. Mm. I mean, you know, drag it with you, baby. Pull it behind your hip. They have the right idea, but that one. They're going to get a discussion. I, it looked like it hit Hoyer off his back foot. I think that's what they're doing is saying runner come back, runner goes to first, other runner goes to second. Well, uh, the home plate umpire referred to the infield umpire, so that's why we're getting the discussion. So we'll see what all three of them think. Yeah, they said, the one said he got hit. So, Albert, they said he got hit. Now they'll that, come back. That's what it looked like to me. It looks like it had, like, kind of, like, nipped off the back foot of Hoyer. So wait and see what the umpires will say. If it didn't hit him and went back, the tying run scores. Agreed. So, they're going to let him score because now what they're saying is it never hit the batter and it bounced away. So, we're tied at four.
So Brett's looking to see if it actually hit him. Well, uh, you know what? The way that ball ricochets too, that's that's pretty wild. To, to, and to me, it looked like it had kind of like skipped off the dirt into his foot and then back. So it was like a little tough. There it is. That's the sports net shot. That's tough because, like, like the the catcher's glove. Looking at that replay, it looks like it meets the back foot at the same time. So it could have been like off the glove first, and then off the foot. But that would make it an actual wild pitch and not a hit batsman. Yeah, but the runner still scores. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the way the ball. Okay, he squares, but when the ball comes and hits him, the ball goes this way. Yeah. If the catcher, how's the catcher going to have the ball deflect that far to his right? That, that's that's your thing, because like, like it goes, cause, you know, Hoyer or his left. I'm sorry, I, I, his ba left. batting lefty hits off like the back foot, and then it's, you know, it should, off yeah, it should go down to the, the third left. Baseline. Yeah, yeah, third baseline, and that's what it whereas did. Whereas if it's it's a, whereas if it's deflecting off the catcher's glove, it's going to go yes to yeah. the right to the right. So that's why I thought this that is he got hit. Yeah, that's why I thought he got hit with the ball because. Because, like, like, it makes no sense for it to go off to the left side if it's off the catcher's glove. Look at the batter's reaction. Yeah. He, throw the ball back. Yeah, yeah. So it's the, it's the, what happened is that there was discussion then the infield umpire was asked what they saw. We have two infield umpires. The home plate umpire can ask what they saw, which is what they finally all agreed on, that it was a wild pitch, run scores, other runner moves to second, and it's now tied at four. Yep, so Barajas in. Right stands now at second, and Hoyer still batting with a 1-0 count. On the outside edge for a strike. So Cypress is probably saying we never get the breaks on these calls. Somebody was watching up here in the booth with us. Brett was watching and had the game on Sportsnet, USA.net. So we actually watched the replay from our shot. Throw and try to get the runner at second. That advances the runner to third. So Cyprus has back-to-back -back miscues. and now the go-ahead run here in the bottom of the eighth is at third base. Really just ill-advised to try to get the runner out at second. Like, you got the one out, you got a runner in scoring position. This is the scenario where you got to focus on the hitter. And, and Wright is, you know, objectively really new into the game. He's only had one other plate appearance before coming into this inning. You don't know how fresh his, his legs are fresh, but on the base pass, he's kind of okay. Yeah, he's kind of got to let him be. Yeah, were were you, were you weren't you a little surprised that he? It it seemed unjustified. Like, unless you've unless you've got like one heck of a pickoff move, then maybe. But that was really not the best move. All right, Hoyer, show me you can really drop a drag butt. <laughs> I want to squeeze. If there ever was a time to do it, now is the time. Oh yeah. Hit. To Pitts in center. Tag the runner. Pitts throws it, but the go ahead run comes in on the sacrifice fly. Hoyer does what he has to do and gets an RBI.
five to four here in the bottom of the eighth. Andrew Nikolic comes up, struck out, flew to center, takes that on the edge of the plate. Five to four here in the bottom of the eighth. Saddleback comes back a little high. Cypress will have one last chance here in this game. Strike three called. Tough, tough pitch to actually take there, but it's called strike three nonetheless, so Nikolak goes down looking to end the inning, but damage done on behalf of the Bobcats. They take the lead five to four two runs on one hit a couple throwing miscues and nobody left on base as we head to the top of the ninth it is saddleback five cypress four here on sportsnet usa.net pitts jackal anderson will be coming up johnson Johnson? Oh, that's right. Johnson came in the game. Rota, that's right. Because Rhoda hit for Anderson, and then Johnson came Johnson in. Johnson came in the game. Rota. So, Johnson, you're right, Albert. Johnson will bat. And then Chapman will be in the hole. Well, we'll see if they think they've got any big bats sitting on the bench here in the ninth inning. And also with the way we know how Cypress tends to do things, for all we know, it could be Nate Norman coming in for Johnson. And is that now Seymour on the mound? Ryan Seymour coming in. Ryan Seymour is now on the mound for Saddleback. So Seymour is going to try and close things out for Saddleback. So we got three, that's like five innings out of Anderson Wolf. Nice three innings out of Dylan Blakely. He gave up two runs, one of them earned. Now we got Ryan Seymour here to close things out. Out of Woodcrest Christian out of Riverside, California. This is an eclectic group of young men here at Saddleback. They're from all over. Robert Pitts Jr. will start things off for Cypress. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Five to four, an exciting community college game here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And yes, it has ramifications because of who is winning and who is not winning in this game on Sportsnet, USA.net. Defensive swing by Robert Pitts. And at the end of that, he pops out and taken there by Ben Castelli. So Ben ranges far out to right field, but had control of the whole thing and out number one for Cypress. Jackal takes that for a strike. Walked in the second. 
Flew out to left in the fifth. Struck out in the seventh. Breaking ball. One down for Cypress here in the ninth. Trailing five to four. Breaking ball that hung and he jumped on it. 337 down left, 373 in left center, 400 straight away center field, 382 in right center, 328 down the right field line. Down in the dirt. For the third. Easy pickup, couple steps, nice dig over at first base by Jack Hudson. As JC makes it throw down in the dirt, Hudson picks it out cleanly for out number two. It's gonna be Trent Lyle pinch hitting for Johnson. I want to thank everybody here at Saddleback for being as kind as they always are, making us feel welcome. Cued. Towards the dugout of Saddleback. Down in the dirt for a ball. Trent Lyle batting 273. It's nine hits for the season. Off the plate. Lyle, easy ground ball to Ben Castelli over at first, and they get him. So Saddleback finds a little magic in their game today and ends up beating Cyprus five to four. Absolutely, and of course, the Bobcats had a great bottom of the eighth, put up two runs on some wild misplays, take the lead. And you know, Mark, we had that total eclipse of the sun last week, Monday, and now suddenly Seymour has got the save for the Bobcats here, and Saddleback wins 5-4. to four. So check those standings in the OEC because it just went topsy-turvy and it got a little closer. Don't forget this coming Thursday, we do it one more time with these two teams. Next time it'll be at Cyprus. But for today, Saddleback comes away with the victory, 5-4, to four over the Cypress Chargers on Sportsnet, USA.net.